We'll call this meeting of the Silver City Town Council to order. Please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If I could ask Councillor Bettison to read our mission statement. Thank you, Mayor. Silver City is the hub of an inclusive community settled within a small town that through guided growth honors and preserves its historical, cultural, and natural heritage while facilitating jobs, health, and educational resources such that the residents and visitors may enjoy and protect the recreational opportunities of the area and high quality of life. Thank you. The <laughs> next item on the agenda is proclamations for Children's Mental Health Awareness Day, May 3rd, 2011. And if I could get those of you that are here for that to join me in the front. Uh, proclamation, whereas addressing the complex mental health needs of children, youth, and families today is fundamental to the future of Silver City, New Mexico, whereas the need for comprehensive, coordinated mental health services for children, youth, and families places upon our community a critical responsibility, whereas it is appropriate that a day should be set apart each year for the direction of our thoughts toward our children's mental health and well-being, whereas Grant County Children's System of Care in cooperation with community behavioral health and school partners utilize a unique collaborative approach to caring for the mental health needs of children, youth, and families in our community. Now, therefore, I, James Marshall, Mayor of the Town of Silver City, do hereby proclaim May 3rd, 2011 as Children's Mental Health Awareness Day in Silver City and urge our citizens and all agencies and organizations interested in meeting the mental health needs of children and youth to engage in activities, programs, and approaches that strengthen families and communities toward the goal of improving the mental health and well-being of our children and youth. Would you like to say anything? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to thank you, Mayor, and Council Men and Women. Thank you all. Um, we'd also like to, if we could, oh, by the way, I brought my own personal photographer. <laughs> um, is it okay if we put it in the newspaper if we can as well? Okay. Um, I would like to introduce Kelsey Wagaman. She's our youth. <coughs> excuse me. She's our youth coordinator for our system of care grant in um, Grant County. And this is Brian Reeves. He is also our anchor site manager for our grant for systems of behavioral health for children in Grant County. And I'm Susie Trujillo. And I do would also like to add, tomorrow was the mayor's birthday. Okay. And um, <laughs> besides that, um, we just have a few things we'd like to say. Anything you want to say about inviting the youth and Greg County to be a part of things? Um, we have some really great activities happening. We have a, a placement that we're going to be distributing to schools with resources about um, children's mental health services. services. Yes, thank you, Kelsey. Yes, we're one of the activities we have to celebrate Children's Mental Health Awareness Day, which is next Tuesday. Uh, it's a national um, event, and state, local, community find different ways to bring attention to the needs of, of children uh, who are having mental health um, challenges and their families. And so one of the things our community has decided to do is to do, uh, something a little bit different, and we designed a, a coloring drawing. This is actually a small version of a larger thing that the uh, state of New Mexico will be printing for us um, in a placement form, and we'll be sending those home with every child in Grant County, um, made zero to five, we'll be sending them home with five copies to take to their families, and what it does is it is it is a coloring activity for the, for the child, and it also shows um, a list of possible symptoms that um, families might want to be aware of, that their, their child might be in need of behavioral health help. And then on the left we have um, many of our local uh, community resources that are available to children and families uh, with mental health needs. Um, and we'll be giving away a box of crayons, a backpack, and some other gifts that all of the children in the county will be getting. 
So that's that's one of the activities that we'll be doing to draw um, folks' attention to this need. And this particular year, the nation is really focusing on how important it is to notice that uh, trauma um, in, in a child's life um, affects them for life. So when you have when you go through various traumatic events from the divorce of your parents to molestation or seeing an accident or someone dying or being involved in the fires that we've had or other incidents, it can really affect you for life if you don't get um, some behavioral health intervention. So we're really just drawing attention to that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for allowing Silver City to proclaim that the day for it. We'd like to thank also, um, excuse me, Town Manager Alex Brown and um, the Mayor as well for participating in all of our many, many meetings that we have. They're always there supporting us and we, uh, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, you all. Thank you. You're welcome. And the Chief. Next item on the agenda is public input. And I remind everybody you have five minutes to speak. If you're looking at me, I'll try to give you a one minute warning. And the first person on the list is Belen de la Garza, reference a bike and car run and show. Come to the podium. My name is Belinda LaGarza, and my husband and I own Black and Blue Tattoo here in Silver City, downtown. And we're getting ready to do a bike and car run and show. Um, we are um, gathering uh, donations for food and cash for, sorry, local uh, churches in, in town uh, for their food pantries. Um, single riders would be $10 with a can of food. Uh, Couple riders would be 15 with two cans of food. Um, all cars will be $10 and a can of food. Um, all those will, of course, go to um, some of the local churches here in town. Uh, we are going to have bike games beginning at 4 p.m., ending around 6 p.m. Uh, have the bike and car show from 6 p.m. till 8 p.m. There'll be a after party at uh, Q's Bistro beginning at 9 p.m. and um, there will be music until about 12 a.m. if we can get an extension on the noise ordinance um, for just that day, uh, May 28th. And um, let's see. Do you guys have any questions? No, thank you. No? Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And the next is Alan Mung, um, Ursa Major and Starsky ATV and Tresh. Hello, Mayor. Hello, Council Members. Uh, I came here about a year and a half ago with this with this problem. <laughs> My name is Alan Mung, and I live over on the east side of Ursa Major, uh, in the Juniper 20th Street area, pretty big neighborhood. And I came to you a year and a half ago, and we had talked about the problems with ATVs and trash specifically and it has gotten to the point where it's really getting out of hand um, today at quarter till five there was an ATV riding up there for you know half an hour I mean there were 55 mile an hour gusts going on at the time I, if a spark were to come off of an ATV or dirt bikes that go up there also our, the, our neighborhood would be devastated it's all grass on the east side of the ridge and the wind was out of the west. It, I mean, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. I've called the non-emergency number of the police many times. I told Ed they've always been great, very responsive. But, of course, many times they get there and the people are already gone by then. Uh, and I just got to the point a couple months ago where I quit calling because I got tired of bugging them and it was just happening so much. Also, I've talked to several neighbors. Uh, they have also mentioned how dangerous it is. There are people, there are probably 30 to 50 people that walk up there every day with their dogs, with kids, and even sometimes babies and strollers. I have seen ATVs and uh, dirt bikes come over the top of the ridge and go over that hump, and it's a blind spot. They could easily hit somebody, easily. I'm surprised it hasn't happened already. 
My neighbor was up there a couple weeks ago. She found a dead dog wrapped in a blanket. Another neighbor I just spoke to today, she was up there on, on Saturday walking her dogs, which she does every day. There were kids in a car, young kids in a car, throwing beer bottles out the window. And she just looked at them and said, are you kidding me? And they gave her the finger. Um, there's drug, pa drug paraphernalia there. There's baby diapers with feces. There's mattresses. I mean, the trash is crazy. But the worst part to me is the ATVs and the, the dirt bikes. I mean, come on. You don't have any common sense on a day like this after we've had all these fires to not be riding anything? But I don't think they, they really care. And the police will tell them, and they just come back again. So I know it needs to be open for fire access. I understand that. But I wish there was a way you could figure out that there was a chain or some kind of blockage that, with a code that they could get in there if they had to, because I really think it should be closed off because the traffic has gotten worse. Oh, I forgot to, this is kind of funny, but um, another neighbor was walking by around dusk and uh, found a couple having sex in the front seat of the car. So there are a lot of cars up there at night. You can get up in the middle of the night, and that's where there's a lot of cars going up and up and down that ridge. I really, really think it should be closed off. There's so many people. It seems like more and more people walk up there now. So it's just gotten to the point today. And I mean, I really, when I walked in, James said, how are you? And I said, I'm ticked off because it's, it's dangerous. I mean, if a spark was there, I mean, we, it would wipe out that whole neighborhood around Juniper and North because it's all, all grass in there. So I hope there's something you can do about it. Because a lot of us, a lot of the neighbors are all frustrated too. They've also called the police many, many times. So I really thank you for listening. I thank you for your time. Alan, would you leave your phone number with Alex or the clerk? And okay. We'll, we'll be in touch. All right. The. Next item on the agenda is council comments. Councilor Moronis, would you like to start? Uh, no comments. Council, thank you. Councilor Ray? No, no comment. Thank you. Councilor Thompson? No comments. Oh, no. I'm not going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Bettison? Just a few. Um, I just want to thank Alan for the comments that he just made. Um, and Alan, I would encourage you and other neighbors to please call me. My home phone number is 538-3887, but do call me, and um, sometimes I, mean, I just want to make sure I know what's going on. I remember when you came about yeah. a year ago, but to know that it's been kind of getting progressively worse uh, is important for us to know. I just want to welcome all the racers, support team sponsors, and visitors to the town of Silver City for the tour of the Gila. Um, enjoy our local restaurants, our galleries, our shops, everything. Um, we're really happy to have you here and um, have a good race. I just want to thank everybody who made Earth Day possible. It was a great event once again. Um, and uh, I appreciate everything that I know GRIP really has a lot to do with that at the town, Earth Day. And then the e-waste day was really a fantastic event. Chuck Fuller and uh, the Recycling Advisory Committee really need to be commended for putting that on. I think there were four semis, ultimately. I don't know if you were, if you know, CJ, four semis that were filled? The equivalent of yes. four semis that were filled with e-waste. And one quick thing that I do want to mention is the Volunteer Center, um, which is here in town that does our uh, food pantry, they have, um, there's an option for them, um, for us to vote and secure a 25 fruit tree orchard uh, for the common center, which they're building over at 13th and Corbin. And the orchard will provide fresh fruit to the Grant County Community uh, Food Pantry and the neighborhood where the commons is located at 13th and Corbin. In order to vote for the volunteer center, you need to go to www.communitiestakeroot and that's r o o t dot com. Select New Mexico. Register with a website. 
You can vote once per day until May 31st to see if we can secure this for our community. <laughs> and what you do to vote is you go select the state list, select New Mexico, go down to Silver City, and click on the, um, the Commons Center. But it says Silver City. So I encourage you to, to sign up, everybody, and let's beat some of those other big towns. Show them what Silver City can do. That's all. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. First of all, I, I want to I want to not thank Susie for announcing tomorrow's event. But oh, that's right. Many many times I get asked how do I keep track of all the jobs that I do have, and mm -hmm. I constantly say that it's I'm surrounded by good staff, and I think many people say that it's they think I'm referring to as my mayor job, which I am, as well as this m about a quarter of my staff from my office for my paying job, and they're the ones that do the work and, and make me look good. So thank you. I also spent some time last week, well, the last three weeks I've spent probably seven, eight nights downtown, spoke with several business owners down there, had some very good dialogue as well as made some observances. Um, in one discussion, I ran across some tourists from Oregon, and I interviewed them and got some, some good response from them. So I was very happy to, to be able to talk to somebody and, and blindly that they not only didn't know I was the mayor, but they didn't believe I was when I told them. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, we had some some good discussion, and they were extremely happy tourists, and taking pictures all over downtown. And um, I also noticed very frequent patrols of law enforcement downtown, and I have spoke to the chief and commended his officers. I know the town manager was walking down there two days in a row and found officers on foot, and I think sometimes we get consumed with our life and running our business down there and we don't realize that there's a lot going out on there on the street and much of it is there are police out there walking driving parking and we we also want to balance that from being a a police state where every corner you look there's a cop and and the tourists wonder why so i i think they're doing a good job in doing that i also spent many hours up on the Mountain View area and spoke with several people, pretty much anybody that was out in their yard, I stopped and talked to them. And they also commended our police department for the presence that they've had up in the in the fire area. And I did relay that to the chief, and I hope you as well pass that on to, to the crews that are out there on the streets. As well as I got a lot of information on, on what goes on in the neighborhoods, and I, I cruised that neighborhood for a while. I parked up there. I met people. I went up around the college, just south of the college, and talked to people up there. And I can tell you it was it makes a mayor feel good when you're, you're driving around hearing what I was hearing. People are really, really satisfied to live in this town. And up by the college area, there was a lot of people out walking, and they were walking pretty much down the middle of the street. So they obviously were feeling safe and comfortable. Does not mean we don't have areas to improve, as as Alan pointed out in some of the Mountain View areas. But overall, I think we're seeing some improvements. I think we're, we're seeing our law enforcement out there. We're seeing our, our staff out there. They're, they're working hard. Um, Lastly, I would just like to welcome the Tour of the Gila back. And for those of you that are not overly fond of bikes, please, it's just a few days a year. Be very, very patient with them. Let's not get anybody hurt out there. And they do provide huge benefit to the town. And in many, many ways but beyond this four or five days that they're they're actually racing here. So let's let's be patient. Let's make them feel welcome and want to come back and come back all year long so and anybody need room too? Councilor. 
I would like to I would like to commend the, the fire department also for being very very quick to response along with the police department. And I want to thank uh, Belen also for bringing up the bike run that is in the works for the in conjunction during the Bruce Festival also. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is council have any changes to the agenda? Hearing none. Next item is approval of minutes of the regular meeting of the town council April 12th, 2011. Mayor, I move that we approve the minutes of the regular town council meeting of April 12, 2011 as presented uh, with minor corrections today, this evening. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor, I second that motion as stated. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes as revised and on our desk now. Is there any discussion? There's a motion and a second. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The next item is reports. Mr. Brown. Uh, I, I really don't have any reports other than today we, we uh, you and I did meet with uh, P&M on the rate, um, the proposed rate increases, and um, uh, those are very important. It's a very important issue because, as far as the town is concerned, because it both both impacts the residents individually, as well as the, the town and the services that we provide. Because it's compounded when the town gets a rate increase, because uh, the individual gets charged at their home. Plus, when we provide water, water, the cost to operate the water system uh, goes up. Because of those rate increases, so they get a com it's get gets compounded. Uh, but um, because of many of the changes and, and the proactiveness of of the utilities and the office of sustainability and the uh, planning department, I, I think that most of those rate increases, uh, as far as the water system, should be mitigated and, and be held to a minimum. Uh, so we shouldn't have to pass on. Uh, any rate increases to the customers at least this year. Thank you. That's it? That's it. And the chief just walked out, so that will save us that report. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't, wasn't here to hear it. Any other, I don't see any other directors. Um, We'll go on unfinished business. Next item, appointment of one member to the cemetery board. And this one I've been a little bit torn over. Um, at, I think we have two good applicants, Lindy Lennox as well as um, former counselor Steve May. I, I held it off last time because I, I wanted to speak with the chair and I did speak with the chair, and her recommendation was um, Steve May. However, on this one, I I tend to want to go with Miss Lennox. I think her background may bring a fresh approach to the the cemetery board that we haven't seen in a while, and the board is currently pretty well filled with with longtime residents that that have extensive knowledge of the history so with that said I would like to appoint Lindy L. Lennox to the cemetery board is there any objection no sir hearing none we could send the appropriate letters the next item on the agenda is under new business approval disapproval of bid number 10 slash 11 dash 12 any park reconstruction, Mr. Brown? Mayor and Council, we finally were able to put out the bid for uh, the Penny Park reconstruction. Uh, we received two bidders, one from Nambe Construction of Santa Fe and the second of Sacaton Construction of Silver City. Uh, Nambe Construction um, was deemed uh, non-responsive because of uh, issues with uh, their workforce solutions uh, registration. And after... 
review of Sakatone construction, uh, they uh, were deemed non-compliant because we found that um, there's actually a special con contractor's permit uh, licensure that is required to build uh, parks, and uh, Sakatone construction does not have that uh, uh, licensure. So uh, it's staff's recommendation to reject both uh, bids and uh, go out uh, for rebid. We also contacted the state um, to, as far as Sakaton construction, and found that um, we could request a waiver for that special uh, uh, licensure from um, construction industries. So we will uh, be doing that as well. Uh, so we can open up the uh, opportunities to uh, all general contractors for for the for the bid. The base bid, uh, for your information, was Mayor. You you, you did make a comment uh, today that uh, the cost was pretty high. Uh, but the base bid is actually the bid to replace everything that was burnt. Mm -hmm. The additive alternates are actually all extras. Okay. Uh, additional things that, that we wanted to put in there. I'm still puzzled by the, the two bids. Mm. I mean, they, one of them is just off the top of my head about 60% of the other bid. That's a, a huge variance. And the lower was out of Santa Fe. Yeah, and, and that was the one that uh, wasn't uh, in compliance with workforce solutions, so maybe they weren't paying their employees. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, any discussion? Um, yeah, for when uh, when are you going to do this immediately? Um, We're going to do this immediately. Okay, and then it'll be a thirty day period again for bids. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yes. Does mm -hmm. okay. go ahead. Does the Sakaton construction have to redo the same paperwork again? Uh, yes. The, if we're able to get the waiver, the waiver, okay. they would be in compliant and qualified for the for the bid. So that's what we're hoping is that they would be able to re rebid as well as other general contractors. That town will do ask for the re uh, for the we, waiver, right? We're already in the process of doing it. Thank you. Any other discussion? Entertain a bid, a motion to reject all bids on bid number ten slash eleven dash twelve. Mayor. Oh, sorry. Councilor Benson. Uh, I move that we um, reject. That's right. Reject um, bid number all. Okay, now you have to say it again because I completely forgot what you just said. Okay. Your motion is to reject all bids. All bids for bid number 10 slash 12. 11 12 Penny Park reconstruction. Correct. Is there a second? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I second that motion. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? There's a motion and a second. No further discussion to reject all bids on bid number 10 slash 11 12 Penny mm -hmm. Park reconstruction. No. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is approval disapproval of contract agreement between the Town of Silver City and the Southwest Solid Waste Authority for fiscal year 2011 recycling services within the Town of Silver City, Mr. Brown. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, the uh, term of the recycling agreement has expired, will expire this year, and uh, we went into, I went into negotiations with the S Solid Waste Authority manager. Um, for the recycling services, uh, at the time that I went in to, to negotiate, uh, we started the single stream recycling, which now accepts uh, many more different types of materials for recycling. And um, when it was presented to, to the Solid Waste Authority Board, 
it was it was stated that the actual cost to do the recycling is is much uh, less costly. So I was going to go in there and and try to decrease the the uh, amount that we're paying for recycling. But when I was presented with the actual amount of now that we've gone to single string recycling, um, apparently it's 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 done what it was intended to do. Um, I got a report from the Solid Waste Authority in 2009. Uh, there was uh, 510 tons of recycling processed through the through the authority. In uh, 2010, there was 984 tons of recycling, so, and uh, so basically. The recycling has increased so much that uh, it's actually costing almost as much to process the, the material because we're processing so much more at the landfill. Uh, but the real benefit to us is that the it diverts that much more recyclables, that much more material from the, the main landfill, uh, which is going to extend the life of the landfill. Um, I don't know, did, did everybody get a copy of this report? Yeah. So, based on previous estimates and, and the, the amount of tonnage of, type of material that was being brought in, the estimated life of the landfill uh, was 19.4 years. Uh, if we continue at the current rate uh, of uh, recycling, the, that life would be extended to 30 30 a little less than 30 and a half years. Um, so um, basically our $171,000 investment that we, we pay a flat rate, $172,171, that's a flat rate that we pay annually. And no matter how much recyclables we send over the, the scale, that's what we pay. Uh, so the, the more that we can divert away from the landfill, the less uh, we have to pay the tipping fees for our customers and um, so it's my recommendation to basically uh, approve the recycling agreement with the same same rate as we had last year the only uh, basic changes are that uh, the types of recyclables that that, that, are, that are receiving at the the description is a little bit more general because uh, the company that is accepting the single stream recycling uh, actually is starting to accept more different types of recyclables. And so I don't want to just limit it to what's in the contract if they're recycling more. In fact, they may even get to glass. Which there is no place for glass right now. You get a market for glass? <coughs> Not much of one, but uh, if we could get the glass into you know mainstream remarkling uh, uh, recycling system, you know in, in Albuquerque there is a bit of a market for glass in Silver City there isn't. What is MSW? Municipal Solid Waste in Trash. Any questions? Questions. Just comment. My, my only question, and Robert, I don't know if you have it in front of you. The 8.11 was something that I asked for last year, which is the performance standard, and we agreed to 95%. However, in light of recent events, it does not look like 8.11 has an exception for 8.6, which is forces of nature. And I'm also on his board, so. And your question is? Should there be an exception in 8.11 indicating that should there be a force majeure that this would not be enforced. Uh, 
we can put that in, you can uh, also read 8.6 as being applicable to 8.11 because it's, it, it's not just liability. It says uh, for any loss, uh, hold the other party uh, liable for any loss. And this would be a loss. The 8.11 would be a loss if they don't make the performance level. So for clarification, we can add it, but I'm comfortable with 8.6 uh, uh, being able to be argued that we were not able to make the 95% compliance because of force majeure. I'm confident with that answer from our attorney on television. You, the authority would have a good argument. So I'm fine with the contract as it's written. Any other discussion? Entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Councilor. I move to approve a uh, contract agreement between the Town of Silver City and the Southwest Solid uh, Waste Authority for fiscal year 2011 recycling services within the Town of Silver City. Mr. Mayor, I second the motion to stay. There's a motion and a second to approve. Is there any discussion? There's a motion and a second to approve and no further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, CJ. Thanks, Diana. Next item on the agenda is discussion and action pertaining to FY 2012 budget. Mr. Brown. Uh, Mayor Council, um, I've, I've uh, completed the preliminary uh, uh, revenue projections for fiscal year 2012 for gross receipts taxes. He just handed you a bill. Another bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and, um, and I just wanted to let you know that um, as far as the three major funds and a larger tax, which usually is are the funds that uh, are scrutinized the most by the council and the public. Um, gross receipts taxes um, projecting a 2.3% uh, increase over uh, what I'm projecting to be our final revenue projections this year. Uh, last year we ended the year at $7.9 million uh, in gross receipts uh, revenues, um, projecting to see about 8.3 closer to $8.4 million in gross receipts revenues next year. Um, and, and that is more than 2.3% because this year we're, we're, uh, we're about 6% above uh, where we were uh, last year. Um, the water sewer fund, uh, of course, um, is, in, is in good shape. Uh, as um, probably the only the one that might remember is the mayor and maybe Councillor Bettison. Um, a few years back we passed an ordinance uh, as far as the sewer and uh, wastewater fees that annually those fees will be reviewed and the fees charged will cover the debt service and operating expenses for uh, the those two uh, costs and um, as of right now uh, I'm not proposing any wastewater fee increases uh, but um, I'm looking about looking at a, an increase of about 15 cents per customer uh, for sewer fees uh, the average for the average cost for per customer and that's to cover some some actual personnel costs that increases that that we're looking at there uh, we're not. I'm not looking at any uh, water rate increases, which would mean that would be the. This would be the third year in a row that we wouldn't have any water rate increases. The we've the revenues have come in uh, as projected. Um, we've made some pretty significant capital uh, replacement. Uh, we replaced a lot of vehicles and equipment in the in the water sewer fund. The sanitation fund is in very good shape. Uh, the there's an annual three percent uh, cost of living increase that's uh, tied to that fund, and um, 
this year we had budgeted to purchase a side loader. Uh, and what we wanted to do was this next fiscal year that's coming up, we wanted to purchase a, a flatbed truck uh, with a, um, a, a boom so we could start the large item collection uh, program. But uh, because the revenues have come in so well, uh, we actually have already made that purchase. So we've, we've received the vehicle and hopefully within the next month and a half we'll have that out and be able to start scheduling large item pickups so um, on, a, on a scheduled basis uh, customers will be able to call in and ask and schedule so that we can go pick up uh, large items like refrigerators, washing machines, those types of things, uh, couches, whatever it might be so that uh, uh, it's just an additional service that's going to be provided without additional cost. Uh, but next year we are, uh, I uh, have uh, budgeted in some uh, capital uh, expenditures for to replace what we call the borough. It's that brown truck that you see downtown uh, because uh, there's some areas in town that we still can't pick up with the side loaders and we're going to pretty much always have to pick up uh, by hand and uh, that is what we're looking at replacing next year as well as some work at the old uh, landfill uh, for ventilations for some methane and some other issues. I also want to say that we, we ended up having to spend about $120,000 at the old landfill for uh, monitoring and some uh, some issues that the environment department wanted us to look at and uh, all of that was covered and, and did not create any overruns um, as far as the sanitation fund is, is concerned, so um, uh, we are we are doing well there. Uh, my main goal tonight is to ask you for direction as far as lodgers tax because we're we're in April. Um, the operating budget for lodgers tax, which which provides some funding for the museum as well as overtime costs for the police department and some for fire overtime for the events. Uh, I have come up with the number of $225,000 for largest tax awards if that's the the route that the council wishes to go. Last year we uh, awarded 175000 I believe, in that range. So. Personally, on lodger's tax, I think we should schedule a work session ASAP and make sure that we do our best to notify the previous applicants and go over the Garrity report. Hey, can we do something like that next week? I, I'm fine with it. I've got a PowerPoint, actually, that I've put together that will give a breakdown of it so we don't have to, everybody in town doesn't have to read the whole thing. If that's okay, because that that's that's the main direction that I need right now. Um, I would I would appreciate that because I think we talked about an overall marketing plan. I just want to see what we're gonna. Yeah, uh, and I think do for that, as the mayor might uh, agree is that uh, the the assessment did uh, review how other uh, communities do it around the state of New Mexico and how we can sort of compare and. It's made some recommendations and on, on how we proceed, and um, you know, it, it's it's a good start. But I think it indicated that there's enough dysfunction around the state that we've actually become the best practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a good good measure of the dysfunctionality of, of the process. Yeah. Councilor Bettis. Have, have we received copies of the Garrity report? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I no. don't see okay, I can have Yolanda email you guys one out. Uh, especially if we're going to be doing a work session, I would appreciate reading the whole. We can do that. Report. I can do that right away. Tomorrow. Send me your schedules for next week. We'll, we'll all do that tomorrow morning. 
Anything else on lodgers? Uh, that's it on lodgers tax. Um, I, if you have any other requests or anything that you want me to focus on as we as I go, if you can give me some sort of idea. No, I I still, you know, I commend you for your management of the budget in, in both your roles. That while many towns are laying off people and cutting here and there, and some are cutting everywhere, your management, our, the organization as a whole's preemptive look at, at cost cutting for at least the last five years that I, I've been on the council, I think we set ourselves up in, in a way that we could manage the, the swing in the economy. And I know this was a discussion that you and I had five years ago. And there's many towns around the state that are wondering how we're pulling this off, especially with the mining industry being, for the majority of that, being on the downs, downhill slide. And it's just now coming up, but you look at our, our charts and they don't match what was seen around the rest of the, the state. And they definitely don't match when it comes to how well you've managed all the funds. I also think it's important to notice as we attended the PNM meeting today, we're, our electric rate is facing a little over 18% increase over the next couple of years. The work that we've already done is going to actually cut our actual bill our rate will still go up, but our bill will actually drop drastically compared to the after the if we measure after the rate, our bill would drop. We may break in, break even. We may be pretty close to a very small increase in electric rates or electric bills after this increase. And a lot of it is the energy efficient pumps the work that Robert Escada did out in the well fields, the work that we've done on the on the sewer plant in increasing its efficient use of energy. At the same time, we also increased its efficiency in processing, which was not energy efficient, but we, we've made up for it in many other ways. And now as we go forward with the solar project to fund, to feed the the sewer plant, we're we're really coming out pretty well, and it's it's been many years coming to this, but and many emails I've had on people thinking that I was crazy on some of these ideas, but now we see why, and we see that this isn't because we're all just solar fans and we want to save the world. It truly really goes back to when, when we made the the Mayor's Climate Change Committee dot dot dot, whatever they are. I made the comment that actually got one vote was it's really dangerous when science is debated by politicians and we really need to stick to what works, what makes sense, and why waste if you don't need to waste? And now we're seeing the benefits. We're not going to see an increase of 18% in our actual bill, just our rate. So with that, I, I'd commend you and your staff for, for managing the budget well. All of the, the department heads that have worked on all these projects and been open-minded to get them done. Yeah, they, they've been very well, very open to looking at new things, and and that's what's been a big help uh, moving forward. Uh, as as far as I just want to state on, on the general fund, uh, a lot of my focus has been trying to try to get the operating uh, uh, the operations back up to to levels of of, uh, of two years ago, and. Um, and we're very, I'm very close to being able to do that right now. So um, that's that's what I'm looking at. But if you guys have anything else that you would like me to, to focus on, please let me know. And um, I'll uh, after next week's meeting, I'll uh, 
I'll have another a budget hearing where I'll actually show you show you numbers and um, and to be honest, my revenue uh, gross receipts revenue projections are actually pretty conservative. So, and I, I think Anita can get the the RFP pretty much ready to go on the lodger's tax. I don't think the RFP is going to change as much. I think it's going to be more on the evaluation side. I'll just have her get the format ready, and we'll make the changes after the work session. Comments? Comments? Mm -hmm. I can tell you of all the crazy ideas that I had, the, the electric trucks, the only thing I've been told about them by the guys that drive them in the meter department is don't call them cute. They're they trucks. They are cute. <laughs> and with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Mayor. I move that we adjourn. I second it. There's a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned.